asking you to have mercy upon us, O oh Lord. Thank you, Lord God. Lord, asking you, Lord Jesus, to bless us, Lord. Bless us with a mind to continue to go after you in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord Lord, Jesus. thanking you, Lord Jesus, for my God opening our eyes to the truth. Thank you, Lord Jesus. My God, thanking you, Lord Jesus, for how you have blessed us, my God. Lord, asking you to open the eyes of many, Lord Jesus, my God, that are going to church every Sunday and through the week. Lord, asking you to open their eyes, Lord Jesus, that they'll be able to see that my God, that thou art the son of the living God. Yes, Lord Jesus. In the name of Jesus Christ. Bless them, my Lord God, Jesus. I ask you to bless them, Lord Jesus, according to your word. Bless them according to your will. Help In them, the Lord name Jesus. of Jesus Christ. Help them to understand, Lord Jesus. My God, that there's one Savior, and that's you. Yes, Lord In the Jesus. name of Jesus Christ. Thanking you for dying on the cross, Lord, yes, Jesus. Lord Jesus. My God, thanking you in the name of Jesus Christ, my God, for staying on the cross. My God, putting up with this world. In the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord my Jesus. God, thanking you for your love, Lord Jesus. Yes, thanking Lord you Jesus. for your comfort, Lord Jesus. Thanking you, Lord Jesus, for how you watched over us, oh God. Yes, Lord my Jesus. God, when we didn't know, Lord Jesus. My God, thanking you for weeping at that time in the name of Jesus Thank Christ. You, Lord Jesus. My God, we're asking you to let this, my God, your word go out, Lord Jesus. Reach those that are confused, Lord Jesus. Reach those that don't know who to go to, Lord. Yes, in Lord the name Jesus. of Jesus Christ. My God, asking you to open up the hearts and the minds of your people, Lord Jesus. Help them, my Lord God, Jesus. that they'll be able to receive your eternal word. In the name of Jesus Christ, my God, we're asking you this day, Lord Jesus, bless your people, Lord bless Jesus. Your people, my Lord God, God, those, my God, that's been taught different things, Lord Jesus, that's contrary to your word. My God, we're asking you to reach out, Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus. by your word, Lord Jesus. Lord my Jesus. God, shake them and wake them. Yes, In the Lord name Jesus. of Jesus Christ, my God, and let them know, Lord Jesus, that there's no other name given while yes, under heaven that Lord while the men could be saved, but by the name of Jesus Christ. My God, these blessing and all, we're asking your name. My God, we're asking you to help the preacher, Lord Jesus. Help us, Lord My Jesus. God, we're asking you, Lord Jesus, to open up his eyes even the more in yes, the name of Jesus, Jesus Christ. My God, thanking you for your eternal word, asking you to bless him, Lord Jesus. My God, these blessing and all, we ask in the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior. And we say, Amen. 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 Saints of God, we do thank God for all things. We thank God for our beloved brother, Minister Camel. We thank God for you that are here on today. We thank God first and foremost for Jesus Christ and him crucified. Thank God for the knowledge of Jesus, knowing how to serve God, and that's through his son, Jesus Christ. You know what? You can't even serve God without Jesus. Because God would not accept your worship if you don't come through his son, Jesus Christ. So we thank God for having a knowledge of that. We thank God so much for all things. Now today, I, I want to I wanna really take my time. As I said before we came on, uh, we got some things running through our mind here, and I want to I wanna be able to teach God's people. A lot of God's people are going through different things that they don't have to go through. Many of God's people are carrying burdens that they don't have to carry. Do you understand? We sang the song, glory, glory, hallelujah, since I laid my burden down. I feel better, the song said, so much better since I laid my burden down. Amen. But yet, they still burned down. They sang in the song. They laid they burned down, but still burdens got them weighted down. Y'all hear Brother Murray? I want to teach you today. I want to teach you according to the scripture what to do with your burdens. I want to show you how to lay them down. Do you understand? Don't just singing, saying that you've laid them down, but you still weighed it down. I want y'all to hear me now. I want you to give me the book of Hebrews, brother, and I want y'all to stay with me because I want to travel here a minute. And I want to show you what God did for us. God made a burden bearer 
I said, God made one. God made one to bear our burdens whereby we don't have to bear them. But you got to know how to give them to him. Everybody just don't know how to give it to him. Do you understand? Now stay with me. Hallelujah to God. Hebrews, brother. My God, man, chapter 2, and I want to start at verse 9. What did it say, twin? But we see Jesus. But we see Jesus. Who was made a little lower than the angels. Hold on a minute. I want to crawl. I don't even want to walk. We see Jesus who was made. How was he made? But we see Jesus who was made a little lower than the angels. That's in nature. Jesus was made lower than the angels in nature. What are the angels? Their spirit. Jesus was made flesh and blood. The seed of Abraham. Why was he made lower than the angels? Because the angels, a spirit, cannot die. Amen. So Jesus was made in a manner whereby he can die. He had to come in a manner where he can die because he got to die for us. He's got to taste death for every man. And the way he was... Prior to becoming the seed of Abraham, he couldn't die that way. What was he? He was the word of God. John chapter 1, you ain't got to get it, twin. My God, John chapter 1, the Bible said at verse 14, the word was made flesh. Amen. When the word was made flesh, that's when he became the seed of Abraham. He had to become the seed of Abraham, my God, in order to be able to bear our burdens. Stay with me. What did it say, brother? But we see Jesus. We see Jesus. Who was made a little lower than the angels. He was made a little lower in nature. It's talking about than the angels. What it said? For the suffering of death. That's why he was made lower than the angels. For the purpose of dying. Amen. What did it say, son? Crowned with glory and honor. Yet, although he was made lower than the angels, he was crowned with glory and with honor. Scripture asked the question until which of the angels said he at any time, thou art my son, and this day have I begotten thee? The answer is none. He didn't say that to none of the angels, but he said it to his son. What did it say, brother? That he, by the grace of God, should taste death for every man. He had to become the seed of Abraham that he could taste death for every man. You see, Satan held something over our head. What did he hold over our head? The fear of death. Amen. Satan came to steal, kill, and to destroy. Death came about because of Satan. Some say I thought it became about because of Adam and Eve, yes, but it still go right back to Satan. Because it was the serpent that was in the garden, my God, that beguiled Eve after the Lord told her, told them, the day you eat thereof, you're going to die. The serpent came in the garden and beguiled Eve and convinced her to bite of the forbidden fruit. Eve in turn took her to her husband. He bit of it and they died. So Satan is the father or the originator, my God, who was responsible for death coming about. So now Satan is holding death over the head of the human family. And the only way, my God, man, this thing could be taken out of death, someone got to come and die, conquer death by getting up from the grave. Somebody got to come and take the sting out of death, take the punch out of death. So somebody got to come and die and come back from the dead. That way he got victory over death, over the grave. He take that power from Satan. My God, therefore, we don't have to fear it no more because our Lord done conquered death. What did it say, brother? For it became him. It became him. For whom are all things? Give me verse 14, brother. Let's get to the point here. What did it say? Hebrews 2, 14. What did it say? For as much then as the children are partakers of flesh and blood. Talking about the human family. For as much then as the children, the human family are partakers of flesh and blood. He also himself likewise took part of the same. Hear what Jesus did. Just like the human family, my God, man, is partakers of flesh and blood. 
Jesus had to come and take part of the same. He had to leave from being the word to partake, my God, with flesh and blood. Let me tell you something. He got to come this way. He got to leave from being the word, become, my God, man, the seed of Abraham. Because let me tell you, what we are going through, he could not tell us to endure and not yield if you ain't never been through it yourself. He got to come in a manner whereby he can feel pain just like us. He got to come in a manner whereby he can be tempted just like us. He got to come in a manner where he can be despised, rejected, lied on, spit on. He got to come in that manner. That way he can come, he can tell us later that you can endure it. Because I've been there already. That's why he had to become the seed of Abraham. He got to become just like a man so he can taste what we're going through. Amen. What did it say, brother? That through death he, he might destroy him that had the power of death. Through death, Jesus will destroy him that had the power of death. That is the devil. He got to come and take my God, man. Look, destroy him. Look, take the punch out of death. Hallelujah to God. What did he say, brother? And deliver them who through fear of death. Deliver them who through fear of death. Were all their lifetime subject to bondage. Walking around fearing death. Amen. But let me tell you something. Our Lord, he done conquered death. He got up. So you know what? We don't have to fear it no more. We're not afraid to die. My God, what did Paul say? Paul said, I'm in a straight betwixt two. Paul let you know he didn't fear death. He said, desiring to go on and be with the Lord. Paul said, but y'all need me around here. Do you understand? Letting you know, my God, man, that death didn't, fear, didn't bring fear in him. He said, for me to die is gain. The psalmist said it this way, precious in the sight of God is the death of all his saints. Amen. My God, Revelation said, blessed are the dead that die in the Lord. So look, our Lord conquered death. We don't have to fear it no more. Amen. But Jesus had to come here in that manner. Whereby he can die, conquer death by rising from the dead. He took the punch out of it. Now we don't have to fear it. What did it say, son? For verily he took not on him the nature of angels. Y'all hear, hear this now. What is the nature of an angel? Spirit. Yeah. Jesus didn't take on him the nature of an angel. Amen. He didn't come as a spirit. But what did he take on? But he took on him the seed of Abraham. That's flesh and blood. He left from being the word and became flesh and blood. Do you understand? What did it say, brother? Wherefore, in all things it behooved him. In all things it behooved Jesus to be made like unto his brother. He had to come here and be made just like the brother, just like a man. What did it say, brother? That he might be a merciful and faithful high priest. That he might be a merciful and a faithful high priest. Hold it. Say of God, don't let that go over your head. It behooved him in all things to be made like the brethren. You see, after he was made like the brethren, now he can become a faithful and a merciful high priest. What are you saying, Murray? He was made just like us. In other words, he going through, he went through just like we're going through. Amen. So if one has gone through what you're going through, if one has been tempted like you're now being tempted, he know how to show mercy. Amen. Think about it now. If a man ain't never went through nothing, that man is not going to know how to show mercy on others. But when a man has gone through himself, my God, he now got knowledge and wisdom to know I got to show mercy. Because I've been there already. It behooved him to be made like the brethren. That he could become a faithful high priest and a merciful high priest. He's acquainted with what we're going through. My God, man, when someone lie on you, Jesus already been there. Amen. Amen. Do you understand? When, some, when man turn his back on you, my God, man, Jesus already been there. When church members, my God, turn on you, Jesus already been there. Amen. He's already been there. When them that are close to you betray you, Judas was at the table. He said, one that's here with me, that's dipping with me, my God, some, one of y'all going to betray me. Amen. Judas was close to him. This is written for our learning. He's been there already. 
Now stay with me. Because the Lord is going to allow Jesus to come through all of this for us. After he go through all of this, God going to come along and highly exalt him. And make him both Lord and Christ. And then he's going to say, now you take all your burdens and cast them on me. Give them to me. I've been through it already. Do you understand? I've been through it. Now you take what you're going through and cast it on me. Hallelujah to God. He been talking now. But he had to go through first himself. And after going through himself, that's when God highly exalted him and gave him a name which is above every name. Yes, sir. Made him both Lord and Christ. Yes, now he's qualified to bear our burdens yes, because he done went through himself. Yes, the Bible says he was tempted at all points, yet without sin. Yes, <laughs> Stay with me. Hebrews 3, continue that, brother. What did it say? When for in all things it behooved him. In all things it behooved Jesus. To be made like unto his brother. To be made just like the brethren. That he might be a merciful and faithful high priest. He better understand because, look, he understand now because he been through what we're now going through. What did it say, brother? And things pertaining to God. And things pertaining to God. What did he say? To make reconciliation for the sins of the people. Hallelujah to God. What did it say, son? For in that he himself have suffered being tempted. And listen, because he himself have gone through, because he himself have suffered being tempted, what? He is able, able to secure them that are tempted. Because he done gone through. He been tempted. He gone through what we're now going through. Now he's able to secure you that's going through. But he had to go through first himself. Amen. Do you understand? What did it say, brother? We're for holy brother. Give me Hebrew 4, 4, start at verse 14. Hebrew 4, 14. Now listen to what the Bible is going to say. Hebrew 4, 14, what did it say? Seeing then that we have a great high priest. Bible says, seeing then that we have what kind of high priest? A great high priest. Hallelujah to God. You remember Hebrew 2 said, my God, being that he was made like the brethren, my God, now he has become a, a merciful and a faithful high priest. Now watch this. Hebrew 4.14 said what? Seeing then that we have a great high priest. Seeing then that we got this great high priest. That has passed into the heavens. Hold it a minute. Where did our high priest go? Into the heavens. What did it say, brother? Jesus, the son of God. So our high priest went into the heavens. That's Jesus, the son of God. What happened? Let us hold fast our profession. Let us hold fast our profession. What did it say, brother? For we have not an high priest which cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities. Do y'all get that? We don't have a high priest that cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities. What you're going through, our high priest, he know how I feel. He been there already. Being that he been there already, he know how to have mercy and compassion on us that are now going through. Amen. Jesus feel our pain, y'all. Do y'all believe that? Jesus feels our pain because he became the seed of Abraham that he can feel our pain. Remember, he was the word. Before he became the seed of Abraham, he was the word that was with God. And the Bible said the word was made flesh. It was made flesh so it can feel what we now feel. You can't tell me I can endure if you ain't never been through this, Jesus. You can't tell me, Jesus, not to yield. My God, if you ain't never been tempted. Jesus, you can't tell me to turn the other cheek if they ain't never smote you. But they smote Jesus, told him to prophesy who hit you. Now, hit a son of God with power. Now, think about it. My God, he could have caused the earth to open up and swallow all of them up. But you know what he did? He endured it. He had to endure it because we're coming behind him. Giving us an example. Showing us how to behave and conduct ourselves. When someone come against you. My God, he didn't retaliate. The Bible teaches how he, he didn't avenge himself. 
Amen. When Peter pulled the sword and cut one of them ear off, he told Peter, put your sword in the sheath. He didn't live by the sword or die by the sword. He said, if I want to fight, I'll call for some angels that can show, in other words, that can show enough throw down. Yes, but he let him know in so many words, I got to drink this cup. I got to endure this. I got to go through this. Why? He was going to be, he's an example for those that will come behind him. Amen. Hear me talking. What did he say, brother? For we have not an high priest. We don't have a high priest. Which cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmity. That cannot feel what we're now going through. What did he say, brother? But was in all points tempted like as we are. In some points tempted. All points tempted. Saints of God, that's deep. All points. You mean Jesus have gone through everything that we can go through right here in this earth? I don't care what you're going through. Jesus has already went through that. So my family turned on me. They turned on Jesus. They lied on me. They called him Beelzebub, chief of the devils. Do you understand? My God, man, they betrayed him. My God, they turned their back on him. My God, all this they done. Let me tell you something. Everything we can go through, Jesus has gone through. But ain't none of us gone through what he went through. Amen. Think about it. Think about it now. Whatever you go through, he done already went through it. Do you understand? But what he went through, ain't none of us went through it. Amen. How many here in here been crucified? How many of y'all here been on the cross? How many of y'all done died, my God, laid in the grave and got up the third day? If you if you in here, I want to shake your hand. <laughs> Do you understand? But I ain't worried. You ain't in here, and you ain't watching either. <laughs> Do you hear me talking? You ain't in here. I'm watching. Hear me talking. What did it say, brother? But was in all points tempted like as we are. Jesus was in all points tempted just like we are. What did he say? Yet without sin. Hold it a minute. You mean he went through all of that, and he didn't sin? Amen. Now y'all listen to me. The thought of foolishness is sin. <laughs> Jesus went through all of that, and he didn't even think to sin. Do you understand? Let somebody smite some of us. Amen. It be on God knows. Do you understand? But remember, Christ is our example. Read that again. What did he say? For we have not an high priest which cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities. What did he say? But was in all points tempted like as we are. Just like we are. Yet without sin. Yet he didn't sin. Read it. Let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace. Wait a minute. Come how? Boldly. You know why you're able to come boldly to the throne of grace? Grace talking about mercy. Why are we able to come boldly now? Because he didn't got the victory. He made it possible where we can come boldly to the throne of grace because the one we serve in, he got the victory. Now we can come boldly to the throne of grace. What did it say, brother? Let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace. What did he say? That we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. That you can find some mercy there, y'all. Because of Jesus, we got mercy. Now look. Being that Jesus went through all of this, he didn't yield, he didn't <laughs> sin. God came along, highly exalted him, made him both Lord and Christ. Now he's going to tell us, now take all your burdens and give them to me. I want them. I want, I want, I want everything you're going through. I done went through it already, now you give me your problem. And I'm going to give you another yoke. Stay with me. He's going to give us another yoke. But all your luggage, all your baggage, all your problems, he wants you to bring them to him. Do, do you hear me talk? I, I want everything you're going through, just bring it to me. First Peter, brother, five and six. Stay with me. First Peter, the five and verse six. I want you to stay with me, my God, man, because some of this stuff, my God, that you're going through, you need to learn how to lay it down. First Peter 5 and 6, my God said what? Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God. Humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God. 
that he may exalt you in due time. If you humble yourself, don't try to avenge yourself. Don't try to fight your own battle. Don't, don't, don't try to take matters in your own hands. Just humble yourself. That he may exalt you. Amen. In due time. What did it say, brother? Casting all your care upon him. Wait a minute. Casting some of your care. All your care upon him. Saints, do y'all understand what all care means? Everything you're going through, he's telling us, give it to me. I want it. I've already went through it. I already done endure it. Give me all your cares. I want all of it. Do you understand? Casting. Do you know what casting means? Throw that thing to Jesus. And don't go back looking for it. That's part of the problem. We, we, we cast cares upon him, but then we go back looking for it. Lord, I think I got it. I can work this out. And before you know it, you make the mess bigger. If you be honest, when you take matters in your own hand, you only make a bigger mess. Give that thing to Jesus and let it stay right there. Give it to him. Give it to him, saints. Hear me talking. We got to learn how. I don't care what you're going through. Give it to Jesus. He going to exchange with us. Now stay with me. Because Jesus is going to exchange with us. He going to take all our cares and say, give them to me. And I want you to take another yoke upon you. And your yoke going to be, you learn of me. Hear, hear me now. Give me all your problems. And you focus on learning all you can learn about me. I want y'all to hear Brother Murray. The more you learn about Jesus, the more you see yourself. Amen. I want you to hear Brother Murray. Hear me, hear me well. First Peter 5, 6, read that again. Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God. Humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God. That he may exalt you in due time. What did he say? Casting all your care upon him. Cast all your care upon him. He want everything you're going through, give it to Jesus. He want it all. He want every bit of it. Amen. He done proved out through the scripture, my God, how he came here to the seed of Abraham. He endured. He went through. He was tempted in all points, yet he didn't sin. God came along, glorified him, highly exalted him, made him Lord and Christ. Now he said, now you bring me your problems. I done showed that I can handle it. I got it. Amen. Do you understand? I got it. If you're willing to give it to me, I got it. Hear me talking. Psalms, brother, 55 and 22. I want you to hear me now. Psalms 55 and at verse 22. And all thy getting, get a good clear understanding. Psalms 55 and 22 said what? Cast thy burden upon the Lord. Wait a minute. Cast what up on the Lord? Thy burden upon the Lord. You know what your burden is? That's whatever you're going through. Some got burdens at home. Some got burdens on the job. Some might my, my government going through problems in marriages. Some going through problems, my God, here. Some going through problems there. My God, some got problems with the children. It's, it, he said, just cast your burdens upon me. Jesus is saying, give it to me, and I got it. I got it. Amen. Read that, brother. What did he say? Cast our burden upon the Lord. Cast our burden upon the Lord. And he shall sustain thee. Do y'all believe if you give it to him, he can keep you? He shall sustain you. you in other words, he got you. He got you. Do you understand? He got you, saints. Do you understand? What did it say, brother? He shall never suffer the righteous to be moved. Do we believe that? If I'm striving to live a life to please God, how in the world that God going to let me fall? That can't happen. You mean I'm striving to live a life to please God, and he going to let He's going to just let me fall. My God, things collapse on me. And here, the earth is his. Amen. The fullness thereof. You mean the God that I've been exalting and praising and telling everybody else to trust them? Now he's going to let everything just collapse on me? It ain't happening. If it happened, the scriptures are broken. 
The only way God going to turn from you, you got to turn from God. Amen. The Bible said, while you be with the Lord, he going to be with you. <laughs> Will he allow trials to come in our life? Yes. The Bible said, a trying of your faith worketh patience. Amen. But we got to understand whatever the Lord allowed to come upon us is for our good. Amen. A lot of times we can't see the good. But we got to understand according to the scripture, the Holy Ghost moved Paul to say all things work together for the good. For them that love God. A lot of times it's hard to see a, the good in certain situations that you're going through. But trust me, the word is right. If you love the Lord, God will turn that thing whereby it will be for your good. Even if it's nothing, my God meant to teach you more faith, more patience to just wait on God. Even if it's no more than later on, somebody come along behind you going through, you can encourage them. I've been through that already. The Lord brought me out of here. Bring you out his way. Amen. All things work together for good. And that's the way we got to understand this. We got to believe the word. I don't care what it is. If you're a child of God, he'll, he'll turn it for your good. We sang the song, the devil meant it for bad, but I'm so glad God meant it for my good. God will come along and turn that thing around whereby it work out for your good. Amen. But we got to believe God. We got to believe God. The trying of your faith, it'll work patience. My God, man, the Lord will come along. He'll allow trials to come to help build us. You search the scripture. The children that was of God, they was tried. Abraham in his day, he was tried. Offer up thy son, only son Isaac. What was that? It was just a trial. It was just a test to see what he would do. Jesus, the Bible said, he was led of the spirit in the wilderness to be tried. You're a child of God. You're going to be tried as well. But now examine yourself. Are you passing the test when they come? Or are you failing it? Amen. You're going to be tried. But you got to be honest with yourself. How you coming out with your test? Look at, ain't, 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 look at, ain't no such thing as well. I made a C minus. You pass or fail. Do your 99 and a half and Jeff won't do. You either pass the test or you fail the test. Ain't no C minus. Amen. Do you understand? Hallelujah to God. What did it say, brother? Cast thy burden upon the Lord. Cast your burden upon the Lord. And he shall sustain thee. Saints, give me Philippians, brother, 4 6. Listen to this. Let me show you how to give it to the Lord. Let me show you how. And it, it doesn't matter what it is. Let me show you how to give it to the Lord. Philippians 4 and at verse 6, what did it say, son? Be careful for nothing. Be careful for nothing. But in everything by prayer and supplication. Wait a minute. In how many things? But in everything. In everything. Prayer and supplication. That's crying out to God. Do what, brother? With thanksgiving. Hold it a minute. Don't leave out the thanksgiving. Prayer and supplication. You crying out to God, but the Bible said with thanksgiving. Amen.
Don't leave that out. Thank God for what he already have done. Don't be an ungrateful child Amen. that always won't, 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 but never is grateful for what has already been done for. Amen. Do you understand? Even in the natural, think about it. If you got a child that's never grateful, my God, it almost put brakes on you. Why? Because in your mind, if I do it, it ain't going to be enough no how. You ain't going to be grateful no how. The scripture's going to teach us, my God, man, prayer and supplication, but it got to be with thanksgiving. Give God thanks for what he already has done. Amen. What did the Bible say, brother? Be careful for nothing. Be careful for nothing. <laughs> but in everything by prayer and supplication. By prayer and supplication. With thanksgiving. With thanksgiving. Let your request be made known unto God. Hold on a minute. Let your request be made known unto God. Let God know what your request is. Prayer and supplication, my God, with thanksgiving, let God know what your request is. Give it to him Amen. and leave it with him. What's the next verse say, brother? And the peace of God. When you make it known, you give it to him, you leave it with him. The Bible said the peace of God. What is that? Which passive all understanding. Hold on a minute. Don't let that go over your head. The peace of God. When you truly give a thing to God, I don't care how dreadful that situation is. God will step in. When you gave it to him, God will step in and give you peace. Why? He take the burden off of you. You didn't gave it to him. He give you peace. And the Bible said, the peace of God which passeth all understanding. Folks don't understand how you're so peaceful with everything that's around you that's going on. The peace of God which passeth all in all understanding. What did it say, brother? Shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Shall keep your hearts and your mind. Do you understand? When you give that thing to God, it won't plague your mind day and night. A lot of folks, my God, man, they need rest in their mind. They can't sleep. They tossed. They driven. Why? You still got it. You ain't gave it to him. Amen. You still got it. Give it to him. And the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, he'll step in and give you a peace of mind. Amen. When you gave it to him. Let him have it and don't go back looking for it. Just keep praying. The Bible said, make your request known to him. He said to make it known to him. And let me tell you something. I don't preach like a lot of these folk that tell you when you pray about a thing, just pray about it one time and don't pray about it no more. I don't talk like that. Why? Because I got an example by the name of Jesus who the Bible declared. He prayed. My God, he went a second time and prayed, saying the same words. The Bible said he went a third time praying, saying the same words. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I tell you not, pray until God answer your prayer. Keep pulling on heaven. Be like Jacob. Jacob said, I won't let you go except thou bless me. That's the way we got to be. Keep crying out to God, my God, man, until he bless you. You got to be persistent. Persistent is what we got to be. Hallelujah to God. The Bible talked about my God, man, in, in the late 18th chapter of the book of Luke, how that woman just kept on going to the one that didn't fear God and didn't care about man. Amen. My God, that fella ain't care about nothing, ain't nobody. But the woman kept going. He kept going. She kept going. Avenge me on my adversary. My God, man, look, the, the, the wicked fella that said, I don't fear God and I don't regard man, but because you keep coming to me, I'm going to give you what you want because if, uh, otherwise you're weary, man. Weary God. Just keep going to him until he grants you your petition. Do you understand? And let me tell you something. You don't have to go to him all sophisticated. It's time of Father God, no, talk to him like you're talking to a man. Amen. Do you understand? Talk to him. You ain't got to come like that. Lord, you told me to cast all my cares on you. Lord, I'm trying to give it to you. Lord Jesus, I need this, I need that. Lord, I'm, I'm leaving it with you. Now, I need you to give me some peace here. Do you understand? Lord, the only thing I can do is what you left on record for me to do. Other help, I don't know. My God, man, 
Talk to him. Give it to him. You ain't got to come. My God, all sophisticated and proper. Give it to him. Give it to him. Amen. And when you give it to him, you'll find yourself with a peace of mind. You won't be walking, my God, man, mind plagued and troubled day and night. Give it to him. The Lord, listen, God prepared him to be able to bear our burdens. That's why he came the way he did. But we got to be willing to give it to him. Amen. And most of us are not there. You know what most of us do? We just worry. We're just trying to figure it out. Well, I do this, I do that. I'm going to call him and say this, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that. When you get done with all that, the mess is bigger. Give it to the Lord and leave it there. Let him have it. You understand? Because you know a lot of times when we start trying to figure it out and work it out, flesh get in it. Amen. Flesh get in it. And when flesh get in it, you got to show enough mercy. Because in many cases you got flesh working on the other side. And now flesh done rose up in you. So you got flesh and flesh. You got a problem here, brother. So you got to learn how to give it to the Lord. And stop work, walk, uh, 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 Luke, brother. 12, 25. Sister, what I want. Luke chapter 12 and that verse 25. Y'all stay with me now. Stay with me. Luke chapter 12 and that verse 25. And all thy getting, get a good clear understanding. Luke 12, 25 said what, twin? And which of you with, with taking thought can add to his stature? Start at verse you... 22. Start at verse 22. Let me show you what this is talking about. What did it say, son? And he said unto his disciples. What did Jesus say to the disciples? Therefore I say unto you. What? Take no thought for your life. I want y'all to get what this is about. Stop trying to think and figure things out on your own. Just, just cut this out. He tell them, take no thought for your life. What did he say, brother? Where ye shall eat. What you gonna eat? Neither, neither for the body. No, neither for the body. Where ye shall put on. What did he say, son? The life is more than meat. The life is more than meat? And the body is more than raiment. What did he say, son? Consider the ravens. Jesus is going to make some comparables here. He said, consider the ravens. You just worrying about.
about this. You're trying to figure this out. How I'm going to eat, how I'm going to get clothes, how I'm going to do this. Jesus said, consider the ravens. What did he say, brother? For they neither sow nor reap. Have you ever seen a raven out there sowing? He out there planting. So I got to get my crop ready. Because me and my little chichi bird got to be able to eat next. Let me tell you something. You never see them out there sowing. Amen. And what else, brother? <clears throat> Which neither have storehouse nor barn. Look, 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 back up and read that again. What did it say? Consider the ravens. Consider the ravens. For they neither sow nor eat nor reap. They ain't out there playing. And you ain't never seen a raven with a barn. I, 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 I'm going to get a little extra today because I don't know what tomorrow going to bring. So I'm going to go and store. I'm, look, I'm going to put me an extra worm over here in the corner. They, they don't do that. Look here, they don't sow and they ain't got no barn to store nothing in. But what the condition is, what were the results? Consider the ravens, for they neither sow nor reap. They don't sow nor reap. Which neither have storehouse nor barn. They ain't got no storehouse or no barn. And God feedeth them. Every day they eat. Every, look here, when they get ready to eat, God got something for them. God allow a worm to come out the ground, wiggle, where the raven can see and where the raven can eat. Amen. Think about it. You don't see no, no, no raven out there planting no crop, man. But God feed them. What the book say, brother? How much more are you better than the fowls? Here we worry, y'all. The Lord tell you, you better than a bird. You better than a fowl. You better than a raven. What you worrying about? What did he say, brother? And which of you with taking thought can add to his stature one cubit? I want y'all to hear it. Taking thought. You meditate. Amen. You worry. This is what I'm going to do. I'm going to try this. I'm going to try that. And if that don't work, I'm going to try this. When you get through trying all that, try Jesus. G give, give it to Jesus. Do you understand? What did the Bible say, brother? If ye then be not able uh, to. Uh, back up. Read that again. What is that? And which of you with taking thought can add to his, his stature one cubit? Which of you by taking thought, by meditating, by worrying can add to his stature one cubit? The answer is none of you. Amen. Nobody can. I don't care how you meditate, how you think, you can't make yourself grow. But if the Lord wants you to grow, you'll grow overnight. Matter of fact, you'll grow right now. Do you understand? What did he say, brother? If ye then be not able to do that thing which is least. If you can't do the small things, what did he say? Why take ye thought for the rest? Why are you trying to worry about the rest? Why don't you just give it to the Lord? Amen. And leave it there. Y'all hear Brother Murray? Examine yourselves. Are you carrying things unnecessary? I've told some of you right here. And even some that's watching. Give it to the Lord. Your situations are too complicated for yourselves. Do you understand? Do y'all hear, Brother Murray? Some of the situations that have been brought to me is too complicated for you. You can't handle it. Amen. You can't handle it. You need Jesus. Jesus got to get in it. And when he get in it, he'll work it out. In some cases, y'all listen to me. Wait. Let me freely speak unto you. In some cases, you're dealing with people that's got unclean spirits. The Bible said it this way, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against spiritual wickedness <laughs> in high <laughs> places. We're wrestling against flesh and blood, against powers. That's what you're fighting against. And you're trying to figure it out. It's beyond your control. You got to turn that thing over to the father of spirits. Do you understand? The Bible called Amen. Jesus the father of spirits. Turn that thing over to Jesus and let him work it out. You can't, my God, on your own fight against no unclean spirit. This is a spiritual battle here. 
turn it over to Jesus and let him work it out. If someone, my God, man, got a spirit of using drugs, crack, or whatever it may be, let me tell you something. You can take that person and you can try to beat that spirit out of them. You beat that person bloody, but you ain't touched the problem. Amen. Do y'all hear my mind? You ain't touched the problem. The problem is what's in him. It's what's in her. That's the problem. You need Jesus Amen. to deal with what you can't see. And that's the spirit that's got them con conducting themselves like that. This is a spiritual battle here. If it was just a physical battle, flesh and blood, someone you could see, then let me tell you something. Us brothers, we can get together and hold some of these, some of these fellas down. But let me tell you something. We can beat them bloody, Ronnie, and won't touch the problem. Do you hear me? This is a spiritual battle, saints, that we're engaged in. And you need the father of spirits to be able to fight for you. Do you understand? Some of these folk, my God, man, that come against you is in the witchcraft. Straight up with, I'm, I'm, I'm talking plainly to you today. Straight up witchcraft. Some of you have talked to me and I told you plainly it's witchcraft. You need Amen. Jesus. You can't fight like they fight. Do you understand? My God, man, let me tell you something. My God, man, look here. They burning candles and, and going and talk to this doctor and talk to that doctor. You better try to talk to Jesus. Do you understand? Talk to Jesus. Amen. He got power over the candle and over any doctor they talking to. Do you hear me talking? This stuff is beyond us. You need Jesus. And let me tell you, when you get Jesus down in you, right, you won't feel none of that stuff. This preacher here is not afraid of it. I'm not afraid of it. I know in whom I serve. <laughs> And I know the power that he possessed and all these spirits in this earth is subject to him. And as long as I obey him, he's going to make them behave. Amen. I'm not worrying about no witchcraft. Is it real? Yes, it's real. But Jesus is real as well. We need Jesus. Give me Matthew.
Matthew, brother, chapter 11 and start at verse 28. Matthew 11 and at verse 28. Stay with me, saints. I want you to get a good, clear understanding. Matthew 11 and at verse 28. What did he say, son? Come unto me. I want you to hear Jesus. Jesus said, come unto me. And what, brother? All ye that labor. Saints, we're laboring. We're working. A lot of times we're working. We're working the wrong way. We're working and trying to work things out and figure things out ourselves. Jesus said, come unto me, all ye that labor. And what? And are heavy laden. Burdened down. Burned down. And that's the condition with many. They labor, but they heavy laden. They burn down. What did Jesus say? Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden. And what Jesus said he'll do? And I will give you rest. That's what we need, y'all. Rest in your minds. Stop worrying about all this stuff. He said, I'll give you rest. I'll give you rest. What did he say, son? Take my yoke upon you. My yoke. This is what I meant earlier where Jesus will exchange with you. He'll take all your cares. He'll take all your baggage, all your luggage, all that junk you did in the world. He won't it. But in return, he wants you to take his yoke upon you and you learn all you can learn about him. And the more you learn about Jesus, the more you will see yourself. And the more you see yourself, the more you're going to see you need Jesus. Y'all hear me now? Amen. He said, take my yoke upon you and do what, twin? And learn of me. Some say you teach Jesus too much. Let me tell y'all something. When people talk like that, <laughs> I know they don't understand what they're saying. Godliness is all centered around Jesus. Everything pertaining to godliness centers around Jesus. We got to learn all we can about Jesus. When we learn all we can about, saints, listen to me. The only way you can know how to live right is by knowing the life of Jesus. Think about what I'm telling you. The only way you'll know how to live right and what to do, you got to know how Jesus lived. He's the example. But if I'm not, if I don't want to hear no more about Jesus, I'm tired of learning about Jesus, how are you going to know how to live? Amen. We got to learn all. He said, take my yoke up on you. He said, and you learn about me. You learn all you can learn about me. That's what you need to be learning. He said more and more about me. The more you learn about Jesus, the more you will learn about yourself. First Peter, brother, 221. Listen to this. First Peter, chapter 2. And at verse 21, my God, what did he say, twin? For even here unto were ye called. Even here unto where you call? Because Christ also suffered for us. Who suffered for us? Christ also. That's Jesus <laughs> suffered for us. What did he say? Suffered for us. What? Leaving us an example. What did Jesus leave us? Leaving us an example. That we should do what? That ye should follow his steps. Saints, how are you going to follow a man's steps if you don't know where he stepped at? How are you going to follow Jesus' steps if you don't know where he stepped at? We got to learn where he stepped and how he handled situations. If he's the example, if he stepped here, we got to step there. Do you understand? My God, man, they smote him. Where did he step at? He didn't turn around and break down. He didn't step like this here. Amen. But that's how we want to step. Do you understand? What, what, what did Jesus do? My God, man, <laughs> he didn't avenge himself. <laughs> what did it say, son? Who did no sin. He's the example who did no sin. What did it say? Neither was gal found in his mouth. This is where he stepped at. He didn't do no sin. 
That's where you got to step. You got, to, you got to step in that same footprint. You got to strive to stay out of sin. Remember, he's the example. Step in his steps. What did it say, brother? Who, when he was reviled. Now, look, his footprints is all over the Bible. His footprints are everywhere, so you know where to step at. Amen. Do you understand? What did it say, brother? Who, when he was reviled. Who, when he was reproached. Reviled, not again. He didn't try to get even. Now, that's where he stepped at. Now, where you step? Where, where you step? Don't try to get crisscross his footprint. Just step right in it. Amen. But you see, Mary, I, the only thing I did was this. I just said this. That's too much. Jesus didn't talk like that. Amen. Step in his same print. Look at step in his same print. Wherever he stepped at, that's where you step. Don't call yourself a Christian. If you ain't following the steps of Christ. Amen. The Bible said they was first called Christians at Antioch. Why were they called Christians? Because they was acting like Christ. Amen. Christianity is not a religion, it's a way of life. Folks say, well, I'm a Christian, I'm, I'm, in, I'm in the religion of Christianity. No, let me tell you something. Christianity, that's a way of life. Being a Christian, that's the way we live. How is that? Like Christ? Amen. And the Bible said, if any man suffer as a Christian, might God rejoice in that and take it patiently. What do you mean suffer as a Christian? Suffer because you're striving to be like Christ. And folks don't understand that they want to come against you. The Bible teach us, teaches us to take that patiently. What did it say, brother? When he suffered, he threatened not. Can you, can you step in that print right there? Bible said when he suffered, he threatened not. He didn't threaten nobody. Amen. Be him when I get back. Oh, I got something for you. Don't make me lay my religion down now. Amen. Jesus told, Jesus said, turn the other cheek.